Hello everyone. Yes, a tech non-touch technique in undressing. And this is the topic today I'm going to discuss in this video. Let me introduce myself first before starting this video. I'm Dr. Kavita M, Vice Principal Academics at MMM College of Nursing, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. Let us move into the video. Aseptic non-touch technique in wound care. So at the viewing this video, the viewers will be able to understand the principles of aseptic non-touch technique in wound care and develop skill in performing wound dressing using ant technique. So let us go into the content of this video. So what is this ant? I already posted a video on explaining aseptic non-touch technique in detail. So if you would like to know about this in detail, you can refer my previous video posted in this YouTube channel. So just brief out the meaning of ant technique. It is a technique used to prevent contamination of key parts and key sites by microorganisms that could cause infection. Healthcare professionals have a greater role in preventing the transmission of infection, either from patient to healthcare personnel or healthcare personnel and its environment to the patient. By using this aseptic non-touch technique, we will be able to reduce the greater percentage of infection that is occurring in the healthcare setting. So this is the main principle that we should remember, that is prevention of contamination by following the strict aseptic technique. So coming into the key principles of aseptic non-touch technique, there are two major principles or points that we should remember in doing any procedure in the clinical setting or in the community setting is key parts. So what is this key parts? In my previous video itself, I have explained in detail about this key parts. So key parts are any equipments that comes into contact with the key site of the patient. So key parts can be any instrument what we use, our hands, our syringes, our um, dressing materials, cleaning agents, anything that comes into contact with the key site or patient skin is the key parts. The simple rule of mentioning the word key parts is anything that comes into contact with a key site or sterile field is called as the key parts. Next is the key site. Key site are any break in the patient's natural skin integrity that provide a portal of entry for microorganisms. If you take the patient, any invasive lines that is present, or sometimes we use biopsy forceps to take the biopsy samples, or a surgical wound, or any skin lesions are cut in the skin or invasive lines. These are the key sites that is present on the patient body, which will act as the portal of entry for microorganism causing the infection. Here in wound dressing, the wound or puncture site is considered as the key site. Next, infection prevention and control principles used in anti-technique is always decontaminate hands effectively where we can use the five moments suggested by World Health Organization for hand cleaning. This hand decontamination can be done either by soap and water hand washing if the hands are visibly soiled. Suppose if the hands are not soiled, then we can go ahead with the alcohol-based hand rubs. The next is never contaminate key parts of the equipment or the patient's susceptible site. The third one is touch non-key parts of the equipment with the confidence and key parts of the equipment with greater carefulness. Take appropriate infection prevention and control precautions in performing any clinical procedures. These are some of the key principles of aseptic non-touch technique. If viewers are very clear about these principles, you can go ahead with performing any clinical procedures. Suppose if you are not confident about these principles, please check in this MMM con 
YouTube channel to watch the detailed explanation of aseptic non-touch technique video. So let us move into the risk assessment in performing the wound care or wound dressing. Here, I'm going to show you the risk assessment and show you the steps of performing the uncomplicated wound dressing or simple wound dressing. So risk assessment is an important element of any nursing procedure or practice, including the aseptic technique. Here, we are going to decide on what are the risks that is, will be prevailing while performing this particular procedure and what kind of aseptic non-touch technique can I choose to perform that procedure? That is the risk assessment. And this risk assessment should incorporate assessment of the complexity of the procedure being undertaken and whether or not key parts can be protected by a non-touch technique. If there is a risk of key parts or key sites being compromised, then we need to go ahead with wearing sterile gloves, which I will show you as the flow chart in the next few minutes. So it is essential to choose the right technique and field to prevent pathogenic microorganism from being introduced to susceptible sites by hands. Surfaces and equipments to help you choose correctly based on your skill level and procedure requirements, a risk assessment can be undertaken by applying a few key considerations. So let us look into this key consideration. In assessing the risk, you need to consider the environmental factors. Is there any threat or any chances that the environment will give rise for the transmission of infection? Then identify the key parts and the key sites. If there are large number of key parts here in the wound dressing, using the bigger wound dressing tray, having the numerous instrument in it and having a large dressing material and the key sites. That is the patient wound size and its other characteristic, the size of the wound, is there any drainage and its stages of healing, patients other comorbidities, all this will act as the key site. If there are large key parts and key sites, then you have to select surgical aseptic technique. If the key parts and key sites are minimal, then you have to think or assess the duration of performing the procedure. If you feel that the procedure is greater than 20 minutes, if it takes, then go ahead with the surgical aseptic technique. If the procedure takes only less than 20 minutes, then go ahead with the standard aseptic technique. The difference between using the surgical aseptic technique and the standard aseptic technique is already explained in detail in my previous video. But still here, I would like to highlight simple things that should be considered in performing the wound dressing. In surgical aseptic technique, mainly we'll be concentrating on the critical aseptic field where we'll display the uh, surgical tray and its instruments and the equipments. And we need to wear the sterile glove and we have to follow the non-touch technique of key sites and the key parts where we need to wear full protective precautions of gown, cap, mask, everything. And Concentrate on the critical micro aseptic fields, which are desirable to protect the key parts and the key sites. In this wound dressing, the micro aseptic fields are the tip of the forceps we use, or the gauze, or the cotton, or the dressing material which comes in contact with the key sites. In case of the standard aseptic technique, if we select to perform the procedure, we need to think about the general aseptic field, that is the trolley, the top layer of the trolley where the dressing material is opened and kept. We can use the non-sterile glove, non-touch technique where we can perform the cleaning with the cloud hand. And critical micro aseptic fields are essential to protect the key parts and the key sites since we are going ahead with the non-sterile gloves. So make sure all instruments are being sterilized properly before performing the procedure. And based on these things, we can go ahead with the performing the hand hygiene of surgical or the standard hand hygiene technique. Once we assessed the risk and selected the standard or the surgical aseptic technique, we will move on to 
performing the procedure. So we need to do certain pre-procedural preparations, which includes check the wound without removing the dressing material, check is there any uh, soaking or drainage over the dressing material and assess the surrounding skin for the redness, swelling, or any signs of inflammation. Inform patient that you are going to perform the dressing and get the consent from the patient as to perform the dressing. If the patient expresses a pain, administer the analgesia if required. Place the patient in a comfortable position before the procedure. Once you have done all this procedure, pre-procedural care, you can go ahead with the arranging the articles for the procedure. The equipments used for this simple wound dressing includes hand sanitizer. Then you also go ahead with the wipeable dedicated dressing tray or the dressing trolley and alcohol wipes. We can use 70 percentage of alcohol or alcohol with the 2 percentage chlorhexidine alcohol wipes, sterile dressing pack. We here we can follow our institutional policy, whether it is being prepared and reused to an after sterilization or nowadays lot of disposable sterile packs are available. Cleansing solution according to the policy, apron, sterile or non-sterile gloves as required based on the standard or the surgical aseptic technique, appropriate wound dressing material. Once we are ready with these things, we can go ahead with performing the procedure. Before that, I would like to show you that in aseptic technique also includes wiping the trolley. When you wipe the trolley, like always wipe at the top shelf of the trolley in a sta uh, standard manner of cleaning the trolley. Then wipe the lower shelf of the trolley, then wipe the all four legs of the trolley. So this has to be done before arranging the articles on the trolley. So the procedure of performing the wound dressing is being divided into three phases. So just before going into these phases, I already shown in my previous video, when we implement the aseptic non-touch technique in the clinical field, we can have the posters, or uh, we can have the standards for each procedures before we could train our staff. Once our staffs are very much familiar with this technique of performing clinical procedure, then they can go ahead. So during the training period, we can make a posters for each procedures by having them into different phases. That is preparation phase, performing the procedure on the patient and the post-procedure phase. So here also I have a poster for it, which I will show you after explaining the procedure for wound care. So the first phase of this wound care procedure involves preparing the articles on the patient. As I explained to you earlier, disinfect the trolley with the alcohol wipes, that is 70% alcohol, alcohol with the 2% chlorhexidine solution. Then dispose all the alcohol wipes used for cleaning the trolley. Gather the equipment listed earlier for wound dressing. Check expiry date of solution and the pack. Here, whatever the things we use, either the sterilized one or the uh, non-reusable or the commercial packs, check for intactness. Any pack that we take, check its intactness, whether the pack is intact or there is any hole or it is damages. Then check the expiry date of the solution and the packs. All the instruments sterilized and the solutions used and the dressing material should not be nearing the expiry date for this wound care. Then perform the hand hygiene, that is before touching the patient. So these are the phase one of the procedure. Next, we'll see into the phase two. In phase two, we are at the bedside of the patient. So just before exposing the wound, don the apron. Next, expose the dressing area where we are going to perform the dressing and perform the hand hygiene that is before clean aseptic procedure. Here you can do the um, alcohol-based hand rub if the hands are not visibly soiled. 
and open the dressing pad by touching only the corners without touching the inner layer of the dressing pad. After opening it, lay it flat to create a critical aseptic field on the top shelf of the trolley. The, the dressing pad and its uh, inner surface will act as the critical aseptic field in this procedure. Then pick up the clinical waste bag and tie on the sides of the trolley. Pour required solution into the liquid compartment of the dressing tray. Open equipment item using the non-touch technique. That is, if the dressing materials are packed, like uh, touching the outer surface, open the dressing material and put it in the critical aseptic field. And remove the soiled dressing. And place the soiled dressing in the clinical waste bag. When we remove the soiled dressing, it is better to wear the glove so that our hands will remain clean. And perform hand hygiene. That is, if you are wearing the uh, glove to remove the soiled dressing, after removing the soiled dressing and discarding it in the clinical waste bag, remove the soil, uh, glove and perform the hand hygiene. That is after body fluid exposure risk and before dressing procedure. That is the third moment of hand washing. Then don't sterile glove using the non-touch technique. Dispose sterile glove wrapper into the non-clinical paste bag. Place sterile wrap adjacent to or under the wound so that we can protect the beddings on the patient sheet. And clean the wound according to the solutions and the uh, site and its desirability. Clean the wound by using one gauze for one stroke and replace the each swab into the clinical waste bag after making a thorough cleaning of the wound. Apply the new sterile dressing by using the non-touch technique. The part of the dressing which is going to come into contact with the wound surface should not be touched even with the gloved hand. So when you are removing the dressing, touch the outer surface of the dressing on both the sides and gently apply on the wound without touching the critical aseptic field. After applying the dressing, we move into the phase three, that is post-procedural care, we call it as. Remove glove at the bedside and dispose in the non-clinical waste bag and perform hand hygiene immediately after removing the gloves and remove apron at the bedside of the patient itself and dispose in the waste bag and dispose clinical as well as the non-clinical waste into its appropriate bags. Perform hand hygiene, that is the fifth moment after touching patient and the fresh patient surroundings and exposure to bodily fluid. Decontaminate and clean the trolley again and before replacing the trolley in the same way, that is top shelf, then the bottom shelf, then the four legs of the trolley. This is the way that you have to perform simple wound dressing during the aseptic non-touch technique without touching the key parts and the key sites. And this is the poster following the aseptic non-touch technique for the uncomplicated wound dressing way. The steps are being divided into three different colors. The green zone represents the preparation zone. The red zone represents the patient side or the patient zone. And that gray zone represents the decontamination zone. In the preparation zone, we have clean hands with the alcohol and drop or soap and water, clean trolley, gather equipment. We can make a checklist of all these items with the yes or no option. After performing each step, this has to be marked so that none of the steps will be neglected or omitted by the clinical staff. Once the equipments are gathered in the bottom shelf of the trolley, we move to the patient zone where the performer of the procedure will wear a apron, then re-clean the hands if required. Then open the dressing bag and position the waste bag on the top shelf of the trolley. Then open the equipment into the critical aseptic field. Now this is considered as the critical aseptic field using the non-touch technique. 
then apply the non sterile glove place the sterile wrap under the wound remove the dressing using the non touch technique and dispose this dressing into the waste clinical waste bag then remove the and sterile glove then again clean the hands with the alcohol hand wrap apply the sterile or the non sterile glove based on the standard or the surgical aseptic technique that we preferred before starting this procedure then clean the wound using the non touch technique one stroke and one swab and thus each swab has to be disposed in the clinical waste bag apply the dressing using the non touch technique and dispose all the equipment into the waste including the glove and the apron and clean hands either with the soap and water or the alcohol based hand job with this the work done at the patient zone ends next will comes to the decontamination zone where again we need to clean the trolley using the same steps explained earlier then clean hands with the soap and water or the alcohol based hand job and this is the flow chart or the assessment form for the uncomplicated wound care using the aseptic non touch technique so aseptic non touch technique is a core nursing and medical skill but the standard to which it can be practiced can be inconsistent a poor technique may be instrumental in causing a healthcare acquired infection so nurses ensure your clinical practice is reflective of the new aseptic procedure to prevent or avoid the healthcare associated infections so these are some of the references i made to prepare this video and simply we watch video and this video let us have a small quiz by answering two simple procedures questions you can answer these two questions in the comment box the first question name a common procedure requiring standard aseptic technique in your practice area and the second question a common procedure requiring surgical aseptic technique in your area answer these questions in the comment box have a good day and the non infectious environment for your patient and all the healthcare personnel thank you